Hi, welcome to another video. So, RuCode has received some pretty cool upgrades since the last time I covered it, and I thought I'd try to go over the new features. Obviously, I won't cover all the upgrades, as there are a ton of them, so I'll mainly focus on the main new stuff here. Let's start from where I left off last time. First of all, a feature that was introduced after my last video is the boomerang tasks. Let's talk about this first, because it's one of the newest and greatest features. What it does is basically similar to Taskmaster or similar tools. It allows you to break down complex projects into smaller, manageable pieces using the new orchestrator mode. Basically, you can choose the orchestrator mode and then the orchestrator will create subtasks and multiple tasks. It then goes ahead and completes each task. As the tasks are completed, the orchestrator is informed manually, which then allows it to move forward and do this for the next high-level task, and so on. I'll show you how it works in a bit, but let's talk about the other cool upgrades. They've also added internationalization which means it now supports over 14 languages, which is pretty cool. There's also SSC support as well. It also has a new text-to-speech option. This will make it do text-to-speech and play the success message that RuCode sends when a task is done, which is pretty cool, but I don't use it as much. There's also a new batch history deletion option. They've also added the option for quick responses, which is basically a list of multiple choice answers that it gives. This is the same as what Klein offers, which is pretty cool. There's also better file mention support and related features, which is good. There's also a new task command in the command palette for those who like to use that. Next, they've made edits faster especially when applying multiple changes at once, which is pretty cool. It now also shows API key balances from Requesty and OpenRouter, which is good. There's now a project-level MCP config option, which allows you to set up MCP servers just for a specific project, which is pretty cool. It's also got smarter Retri logic for Gemini models, which is actually quite good. It now has import and export settings as well, which allows you to export API providers, profiles, global settings, and more. You can also now pin and sort the API profiles for better and easier access. The suggested answers can now be edited. So, if you want an answer to be a bit different, you can do that. There's also Roo Rules file support which allows you to put in custom instructions here, along with Roo rules for specific modes as well, which is pretty cool. It's also got per-profile rate limits, which is pretty good. It also has new terminal options, which is actually pretty good, because there used to be an issue where it wouldn't register outputs until you ran another command just to bring it out of that state. So, it's now much better and it allows you to add a small pause after running commands to fix the capture issues. It also has better diff error display, along with new support for caching in Gemini 2.5. So, Gemini 2.5 Pro now supports prompt caching, which is great. I think it brings down the input costs to $0.31 cents and $0.625 respectively, for less than 200k tokens and more. So, that's quite good to see. Requesty makes the caching automatic, which is great, and I just use that. But if you use the regular API or open router, then you'll need to enable the checkbox. There's also a new minimalist look for RuCode, which I personally like a lot. It also added prompt caching for Vertex, along with improved terminal command handling, which is definitely cool. So, these are the updates. But now, let me show them to you in action.
But before we do that, let me tell you about today's sponsor, Photogenius AI. Photogenius AI is an all-in-one AI-powered art generator that allows you to type anything and get stunning visuals instantly. It gives you all kinds of image generation, video generation, and even 3D model generation models in one place. Whether it be Flux, Stable Diffusion, Google's Image Gen, or VO2 Video Gen model, or even Kling, or any image or video generator model that you can think of. You can just type in your prompt for a video or image and get it generated in literal seconds. You can also generate 3D model generations with it in literal seconds as well. Not just that, it also gives you the option to do advanced AI image editing as well with their cool AI tools like an AI avatar generator, background removal, logo generator, emotion emoji generator, YouTube thumbnail generator, or even add an app icon generator. And the best part is that it starts at only $10 and you can get an additional 25% off these already great deals by using my coupon code KING25. So make sure that you check out photogenius.ai through the link in the description and generate some cool stuff with it. Now back to the video. Just open up VS Code and make sure you upgrade RuCode to the latest version. First of all, as you can see, RuCode looks a bit better now. The tasks are not immediately visible here, which is something I like, and the bottom prompt box also looks a bit better now. Now let's start with the boomerang feature itself. Here, you can see the orchestrator option with the boomerang emoji. Let's select this. Now, we can ask it to do something. So, let me just ask it to add a charts page to this. This is my testing application. I'm going to do that, and you can see that it asks me to run a subtask, which will do this for me. It makes a plan and gives it to the subtask. We can now ask it to just use the subtask, and then it will create a new task and use the code mode instead. So, you can see it doing that. This feature actually seems to be available in Klein as well now, because it can also do this. But anyway, as soon as it's done, we can take it back to the main task and mark it as completed there. And it will just get the task completed because there aren't any other subtasks to do. So, there's that. It's quite good for sure. Though I don't use it as much myself because I believe the context you gave it before doesn't remain there. And the API costs are also not recorded in the original thread, which is bad for tracking and such. So, there's that. Anyway, if we go to the MCP option here, it now supports project-level MCPs, which is pretty good to see, and it allows you to have custom MCP servers according to your needs for a specific project, which is quite good. You can also now export, import, and reset the API settings. So, if you want to share your exact settings, that's now possible. Also, if you go to the API Profiles drop-down on the home page, you can now pin the profiles you like the most, and they will appear at the top for easy access. You can also now create project-wide rule files by creating a rule rules file. Or if you want to give rules to a specific mode, you can make a rule rules file with a hyphen and the mode name, like code or something. If you want to place multiple rules files, you can put them in a rules folder in the rule folder here, and it will take into context all the rules files. For mode-specific rules, you can create a rules-model name and put all the rule files in there. You can also now set the terminal command delay, which you can find by navigating to the settings option and then scrolling down. You can set that up accordingly. You can also enable support for whichever shell you use here, like PowerShell or Zosh or anything like that. For the models, I've mainly been using Gemini 2.5 Pro from Requesty, which works amazingly well and fast and comes with catching built in. There's also the free DeepSeek API on Open Router, which you can use, or just use the Direct Provider API, which shows in the free option under Open Router for better rate limits. For local models, I use GLM 432B because that's currently the best. The MCP servers that I mainly use are just Serper 
contact 7, and fetch. And that gets most of the stuff done for me. These are the updates. I really liked the new upgrades, and that's why I wanted to talk about them. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.